Lord, you provide the flame for our lamps and turn the darkness around us into your light. Amen. Mother Claire began. Hello, Lord, I'm here. How are you feeling? Jesus replied. I don't know, Lord, but utterly discouraged, like all hope and joy of the future, just zapped from me this morning, like a cloud of sadness has come over my heart, although I am trying to smile through it. Well, beloved, it's what you're meditating on and who you are receiving from. There are lying spirits and many demons of discouragement that want you to give up and stop your forward motion. That is why the rhema was given, and you are constantly being taunted by demons of unbelief. I know it's been hard, my beloved, to walk by faith and not by sight, when nothing seems to have come to rotation or resulted in anything. But remember, give grace time to work. I am working and moving in your life, the lives of your loved ones, in your nation, and the life of this community. All is working according to my plan, although the enemy of your soul would like for you to think, rather, because they really believe they have the upper hand in all that is going on in the world. It is darkest before the dawn, and dawn will and is breaking through. Will you trust me? Help me, Lord. Please help me to trust and believe your words. Your great trust in me causes me to continuously give you many graces. You are riding on my grace even now. You are being held together fast and sustained by my grace. It will carry you through this threshold, and in all your trials, you will make it through each one. Thank you for stopping me, Lord, in prayer to talk with me. Well, I know you are hurting and persevering through your pain to continue on with prayers and duties, but I hate to see you this way, beloved. I hate to see my joy stolen from you and how I appreciate so much your efforts to be obedient and to persevere in your prayers when you're hurting. But I am your God-man, your honey God, he said, smiling, and I long to comfort you and talk with you always to bring a smile upon your face. I am not distant, but so present to you, beloved little one. I am here for you and would prefer you to talk to me about these things rather than just move past how you're feeling. Because I feel your pain too. I am suffering with you and how very good it is when we talk to one another. It brings me great comfort. And joy as well when your heart is healed, my heart is healed. Do you understand now? Yes, Lord, I do. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for being such a great friend and spouse. I can feel the ache in my gut going away slowly but surely. You see there? My words bring life and healing. Thank you for listening, beloved. I want to talk with my brides about grace. You are not the only one battling these emotions and feelings. It's been hard on everyone. My brides, I am so pleased and proud of each of you, for so many of you have battled with wanting to give up in the storm you find yourself in. But I am in the boat with you and will quiet the storm at the appropriate time. Trust me, my grace is sufficient for each of you in your weakness. I love to see my brides weak, vulnerable, incapable, and looking to me for help, because this is your true state. You are so very weak, and the more you embrace your weaknesses, the more I rush to you with my grace. It is true that my grace is rushed down to the lowliest places. The more weak and lowly you are, the more my strength is made perfect. You see, weakness is what qualifies you for my grace. I want you to really understand that. So many despise their weaknesses. You are taught in this world to be strong, to have it all together, to know the right thing to do, the right thing to say, to have an attitude that is self-sufficient, self-reliant, and self-confident. The key word in all those things is self. In this world, you are taught to rely so much on yourself. 
Therefore, you despise any weakness you see in yourself, and even in my church it is rampant. You have ministers, pastors, shepherds, and servants who are hurting deeply, but in order not to come across as weak, they wear a mask. They can't be open with their flock because they will be seen as weak, and they cannot for sure expose their faults or struggles. Why? Because they must be a strong leader not to weaken the others? But I tell you, my brides, what weakens a soul is when they carry the burden on their own, when they allow pain, hurt, to go undetected or not confessed. It weakens them and grows like infection in their soul. It is worse when they cover it all, because they then produce other souls who will fall by not sharing their weakness and putting on the facade that they are strong when in fact they are the weakest. And as a side, because you are appointed in the place, you don't come equipped. You're appointed and he equips you afterwards. It's Christ working through you that people see, not you being a high hot shot. You come weak and broken in that role so that God can use you. But if you think you have to be someone before you can become somebody, you will get humbled and God will expose who you are. My beloved little ones, I took on human weakness during my passion. I looked utterly pitiful in the eyes of everyone. Even my mother couldn't do much in the midst of her silent tears and pain, sighing in pity of what the Father had decided to do to me, in me, and through me. I fell not only once, but three different times at the wit of my cross and my utter human weakness and incapability to walk any longer. With one sigh of my heart, I could have had legions of angels come to my rescue, the cross obliterated in pieces, the ground shaking, and the soldiers and crowd-goers who were taunting me struck dead in a millisecond, just with my sigh. That is the power and authority the Father gave me. I could have rose up like a superhero of your day and completely brought my enemies to nothing in strength and much power, but I didn't. I was not to be God carrying the cross, but a mere man who laid down his divinity to the Father for the sake of your salvation, for the sake of grace, the grace of courage and perseverance that I knew was so desperately needed to overcome this world's trials and suffering. I had to be weak, vulnerable and pitiful before man, so that the Father's strength would be perfected in me, and it was perfected until the end, at my last words, it is finished. Meaning every grace needed for mankind was perfected in me. It was indeed finished. Now I knew that souls could endure, could persevere, could live as I lived, and could also make it to finish the race as I did. I finished it so that you all may finish well. Your weakness is so very beautiful to me, my brides. I know each of you and each of your weaknesses very well, and I don't turn in shame, but rather I run to comfort, carry, and strengthen you. So please don't despise your weakness. Don't be discouraged by it, nor hide it from others. I don't want a bride who is all together, nor do I want the world to see that. I want a bride who is faithful, admits her mess, who is enduring, admits her many falls, who is utterly helpless, but continuously relying on me, who boasts in her weakness, and who humbly accepts who she is not, and who she is by the grace of God. Each of you are a woven tapestry of my grace, flying high above the worries and woes of life, rely on my grace and call upon me for more grace, and I will carry you through.